We had the Reserve Bank releasing money, money supply and credit growth numbers for September. These tell a number of stories about the state of the consumer, the housing market and businesses. Credit grew by just over 9%, up from just under 8% the previous month and stronger than analysts had expected. Bridget Taylor is Head of Institutional Flow Sales at Nedbank Capital. Welcome, Bridget. Good to have you here. So we can break it down. What's the story, the picture you get about the, the South African consumer? I think the South African consumer still remains under a lot of pressure. I mean, if you think of what we've seen recently with um, the, the debacle in the mining sector, just creating that uncertainty around employment, you're still running high debt levels, etc. even though interest rates are at all-time lows. That being said, though, they are um, accessing credit. And the concern there really is the knock-on effects to our current account deficit, which continues to remain under pressure. And in fact, the last number came out at 6.4% of GDP, which is what, um, a lot higher than what, we, uh, what we'd certainly anticipated. You're saying lots of imports in, in that number, we, we're spending on imported items. It's a lot of, yeah, it's consumables. We're not, we're not seeing people investing in houses. We're not seeing them looking for long-term investments. It's quick, short money. It's quick spending. And it's not really, uh, it's not the best case scenario if you're looking at um, creating a robust economy. So there's, it's a little bit concerning yes. with regards to the numbers that, that came out today that were certainly a lot higher than the market had Yes. We also saw a knock-on effect in the RAND. We've seen the RAND weaken off. The RAND's up this morning. It traded up to 871. So it still remains in that weaker band, and we continue to see RAND trading in, in weaker levels. Um, you know, as we, we see the follow-through from the medium-term budget, etc., and the concerns around um, implications with regards to current account, with regards to potential for inflation, etc. So the underlying fundamentals in South Africa not that rosy yes. currently. And the theme, of course, ironically, in the interim budget was on sustainability. Mm -hmm. Staying with this theme Bridget referred to, we're not investing in houses and just shows you how rich these credit numbers are because we, we can look at the mortgage advances, very right. weak. Exceptionally weak. Um, in the month, I think there was an increase of about 0.1%, something like 670 million. I mean, that's David's one house that he... <laughs> that he <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, lot, not a lot of mortgage. Um, at, you don't have a mortgage, do you? I made a mistake. Of course he doesn't. Okay. No, I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. So, uh, and looking year on year, mortgage is just over 1%. Think about this. Mortgage advances in South Africa total is growing at just over 1% at the lowest interest rate since 1974. Now, to me, that's shocking because South Africa needs to develop housing and as we've got a shortage of property and we're just not, we're just not financing it. Yet when we look at unsecured credit mm. growing at 36%, um, that's basically personal loans, as, as Bridget said, to go shopping and import it. Yes. So, so the mixture is all wrong. And obviously banks are making good money so far out of unsecured credit. And they don't really make good money out of mortgages. Um, but it's not a great recipe for, for the development of the country. And I also think, as Bridget said, a lot of that unsecured credit is ultimately ending up in the shops, which sounds good, but then we import in this stuff. We're becoming a lot more import intensive yes. in this country. Yes. And what you're going to see later is this week, which um, Kevin was alluding to earlier, is we've got the trade data. And trade data, last, um, the last number that was released was extremely wide, considering what we were expecting. And with the RAND continuing to weaken, we're not seeing the exports that ultimately should be getting the benefit from a weaker RAND. In fact, we continue to be net importers. And that's you're going to see another figure that's going to come under pressure. And that in turn puts pressure on the current account. David, what does this mean for the banks? Well, I, I know what it means for ShopRite. Okay. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. if you put this in context, you saw a staggering result coming out of uh, uh, update from ShopRite today. And you know, you wonder where they're making the money. You know, I'm sure they're eating someone else's lunch. In other words, taking market share away. But you can't ignore the fact that they're growing in an environment which is very difficult to understand or grasp, you know, where they're making it. And this makes sense if it's on the unsecured lending side, the social grants, the extension of social grants, I believe another million people are going to be getting social grants. Well then, you know, the retailers seem to be where it's happening. And of course, then it must be the banks also. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I looked in Nedbank and we didn't yeah. see any hint of, uh, you know, there was no mention of the increase in unsecured loans there. Well, look, if, you look at, if you look at the net bank number, mm -hmm. I think that, the, that they're only growing their total book by mm -hmm. around about 3 or 4%. It's not as if there's a huge amount of advances mm -hmm. going on. Yet, if you look at the top line, net bank is doing quite well and shows you how a bank can make money without actually necessarily <laughs> doing finance. Mm -hmm. it's, all the, it's all the non interest income, all the transactional banking mm -hmm. um, that is benefiting them. So they, they're not, they're growing the unsecured book. 
I think they're probably managing it a bit better than some of the other banks, not being quite as aggressive. And then the other areas, equally, they're not doing mortgage advances, but the banks are able to generate good income using basically transactional revenue. Bridget, all of this, we, we, the message we're getting from the economic indicators, including today's credit numbers, is that growth isn't bombed out. So it's reasonable, not exciting. Um, and inflation is also slightly above expectations. So very little chance of another rate cut, it seems. It seems so. I think we can, we can basically cut the next decision off the table. I don't think we're going to see a rate cut in November. I should certainly not like to think that we'll see one. And then going forward, if you look at what, what's happening on the front markets, front markets are now starting to price in for the opportunity that we may just see a, a, a hike coming through hike. and especially yes definitely with you know with us now looking at things like inflation numbers printing as high as they did just previously starting to draw into question are we not turning the, the corner and are we not starting to become too aggressive in terms of looking for cuts in this environment as you say the problem with the growth scenario is our debt levels are higher than our growth so we're running uh, um, debt levels that are not really sustainable and in an environment where the rand and the currency remains we could pose as inflationary risks which we can expect to see down the line with the wage increases etc so i think we must start to consider that we may be on a flat rate cycle if not looking for hikes coming coming down the line bridges from nedbank <laughs> What, don't you, don't you want to believe no, that? Because <laughs> when I read Mark Brown's statement today, he was looking for a possible rate cut was in his it? statement. Yeah, so I just thought, well, maybe, maybe you read a different thing. Could have said what the CEO said. <laughs> <laughs> no, our yeah. research team is definitely looking for a flat rate decision that, in that's November. But maybe all of this is pointing, <laughs> pointing to some structural flaws. You talk about uh, importing uh, too much and not saving enough and, and all these imbalances. And uh, Praveen Gordon really, I think, uh, implored markets to, to be patient with us. He says these things don't improve overnight. Uh, look, I think that's fair, but it, you, know, we need, you need to intervene a little bit uh, in order to correct some of these imbalances. And, uh, and the way we've set up policy at the moment, you're just not going to see it naturally co co correct. You're just going to see an ongoing uh, unsecured credit boom, an ongoing import boom. What we really need is a fixed investment cycle, but that's not going to happen without clarity on, I would say, on policy. So we need to change the dynamic a little bit in order to get a better balanced growth in South Africa. Indeed. It's quite a, it's, you know what's interesting about this? I mean, if you listen to the discussion, because I follow ABLE, and I'm, uh, I'm a shareholder there, and the share has been under quite a lot of weakness. Now, that might be specific to the company. They might be doing something wrong that the market's picked up. Alternatively, there still is a lot of concerns about a bubble in the unsecured lending. And you know, Capitech, Abel have been under severe pressure uh, on the worries that this is uh, you know, coming to an end mm. and that this will start to slow down. So no comfort in these credit numbers yeah. because that's still continuing at mm, deep in the 30%. Well, I mean, to be fair, any time a category of credit is growing at 36%, mm. Um, you have to be concerned because it's growing above anybody's growth in income. So it, it is an area for concern. Where, where I don't think it is that much of a concern is that is this about to destabilize the banking system? It's too small in that context. But could it have damaging effects if South Africa goes into a little bit of a shock? where we find that unemployment rises, et cetera, yes. then it's a worry.